We are back playing some buy, sell, hold for Dynasty Football, talking about two running backs in today's video, starting off with Josh Jacobs from the Green Bay Packers. 26 and a half years old, keep trade cut, RB15. Um, I don't think that's changed since I've made this. No, it hasn't. Um, startup EP at the 507 as RB11. So um, actually going higher in startup leagues and that uh, hasn't changed really either. Um, you see his numbers there, you know, his big year in 2022, he was the RB4, was really bad last year, like really bad. Um, I know he came in kind of uh, with the, uh, he was holding out and stuff. So he expected a slow start, but he just never got going. He averaged 3.5 yards per carry. Uh, Zamir White behind that same um, offensive line averaged 4.3 yards a carry. Now he's on the Packers, which we expect to be really good. But we're trying to see if we want to buy, sell, hold on him. Um, 2025, late first uh, or slash early second. He's like right, he's right in that zone where a 112 is considered a win for the 112 side. 201 is considered a win for the Jacob side. Um, what are you doing with Josh Jacobs, Brian? Are you buying, are you selling, or are you holding? Um, yeah, I, I think I'd buy. I am a little worried about um, his efficiency um, from last year, but I do think he's going to have the large amount of the workload. I don't think um, A.J. Dillon or... Um, Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd, yeah. I was like, I keep wanting to say the the Chargers guy. Yeah, I don't think they're necessarily going to like take the role over from him. They're definitely going to be involved. Like Green Bay always operates out of a multi-back system for sure. Um, you know, he's still got the youth on his side. Um, they did give him a good size contract, which I know there's been a lot of talk about where it's like, oh, it's a four-year contract, but it could just be a one-year contract. And it's like, well, yeah, I think it's, he's almost playing for his contract for next year, even to see if he's like good enough on the team. I think the Packers um, passing game is going to be as good or if not even a little better next year or this year rather than it was last year. And so that always helps the running game. Um, yeah, I think I'd buy at this, at this, uh, price if i'm a contender i think he's a solid running back to have on your team yeah it's it's interesting uh because you know again uh, running backs i think we make a huge mistake of, of really looking beyond the coming year for for like 80 percent of the running backs out there there's very few guys i do that with jacobs to me is kind of that year-to-year -year guy um you know, right. And he's in that range of kind of the same guys like Derrick Henry, DeAndre Swift, you know, Zamir White, Andre Stevenson. Those are all guys who like, you know, could they produce for multiple years? Yes. But like, am I really caring what he does in 2025? Not really. I do think there's a chance where like, we are kind of sleeping on him a bit um, because this offense could just be really, really good. Um, I mean, it kind of was last year and he could just get like 15 touchdowns. Um so that's definitely a possibility. Now they are going to use two running backs. Um, that's like almost a guarantee. They they did it with Aaron Jones and, and AJ Dillon or Aaron Jones and, and Jamal Williams. Matt LaFleur, he was the um offensive coordinator for the Titans in, in twenty in twenty eighteen. And uh he had Derrick Henry on his team and he gave Dion Lewis um like a ridiculous amount of carries more than he should have i remember this because i freaking had derrick henry and um you know he didn't break out to the end of the year that's when he went on like a crazy stretch at the end of the year it's like yeah this guy has been here the whole time why are you using Dion lewis who was like 29 years old at the point and never any good but he had 155 carries Dion lewis did um and uh 59 catches so we're talking about 200 touches for Dion lewis when you had a young derrick henry and Derrick Henry had 230 touches. So they're always going to use multiple guys. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, now, that doesn't mean he can't be good. He is pretty volatile, though, because if he just does, he's, he's not good next year or, you know, this coming year, 2024, like he, he's going to plummet in value because we're going to have two, two years now 
where he is has not been very good or efficient. Um, you know, his best year came four years into his career, which I would, you know, was telling people like, that's when you should sell guys like a running back whose best, whose career a year comes in year four. Like this is when you should sell him. And that probably is going to be his best year. Um, it's something, it's a move I don't want to make right now though. Like that's for sure. I want to wait until October and like evaluate my team and like, okay, I need to add a running back to this team. Let me see if I can get Jacobs. Now, maybe you can't because he's doing well and his price goes up. That's always a risk. Um, you know, maybe the, the team that has him is a contender, but um, yeah, I, it, it's tough. For like 2025, if, I, if someone offered me a 2025 first round pick, I think I would just take it, uh, whether I'm contending or not. But I understand the, the viewpoint of like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get Jacobs on my team, who's probably at worst going to be a top 20 running back. So even his bad year last year, he was still 18th in points per game. Um, yeah. And I, and I, I think that's uh, an important distinction too. Like, I feel like he was, when he was on the Raiders, he was always good. Um, and he wasn't necessarily like elite, but I mean, like his, his finishes are always like within, you know, like a, as like a mid range or better um, RB two, you know, with RB one upside. And I think that's what he's going to have on the Packers. Like he's going to have over 250 opportunities. I think like he is mm -hmm. going to be like the Aaron Jones replacement more or less for the Packers, like in that role anyway. So I feel yeah. good about that. Sometimes a part of me wishes like the, the NFL draft happens first and then free agency. Cause I do wonder if they were able to get Marshawn Lloyd, which they seem to really like. I do wonder if they would have still gone out and, and paid Josh Jacobs. Um, but it is a one-year deal, like you you said. It, you know, it could be a one-year deal. Um, yeah, no, I guess my, my only worry there is, like, how many catches does he get? And if he doesn't get that, he's going to need touchdowns, which is definitely in the in the realm of possibility there. Um, never has a – he's never caught a receiving touchdown, by the way. 197 catches, zero receiving touchdowns. So hopefully that changes – for Josh Jacobs. Um, anything else here? Should we move on? Now we can move on. Let's move on to Zach Moss, who the numbers have changed here a little bit from when I made this a few weeks ago. 26.6 years old, RB38 now on Keep, keep Trade Cut. I know that says um, 31, but he's obviously fallen a bit just because of the news of um, uh, like Chase Brown was running with the ones or something. Um, which we'll get to. Startup ADP actually um, hasn't changed too much. Uh, 1104 currently. And yeah, so it, he's basically, his startup ADP is around the same, um, kind of worth a mid second. Maybe that's closer to a late second now in 2025, uh, a late second in 2024. You see the numbers there. Had a big year after just being a huge disappointment um, with the Bills um his first couple of years third round pick with the bills and he didn't even make it to year three with the bills i think he got uh, cut or traded in the middle of 2022 his third year but he was rb24 last year um even with jonathan taylor coming back and and all that so like he had that stretch obviously from from week um two to six where he was awesome um really really good he also, I think, got banged up a little bit, but still RB24, even with Josh Jacobs and all that. So, Jonathan um, Taylor. yeah, sorry, Jonathan Taylor uh, coming back. Now he's on the Bengals. I was kind of getting excited about Zach Moss and like the possibility of like, I think he's just going to be Joe Mixon this year. So, I, I, I'm curious where you're at. I think I'm going to buy him actually still for if I, if I can get a late. A, a random second where I think I'm gonna it's gonna be late in 2025. It's risky, but I think I might do that, which sounds gross because it's Zach Moss. But I'm curious where you stand with this one uh, with Zach Moss here. Are you just are you selling that, getting a random second, or are you buying that for a random second, or just holding? Yeah, um, I, I I think he's a hold. I I think it's kind of funny. Um, like what you said about like the guy having the best career year in his fourth year because that's what Zach Moss did. Yeah. It's kind of hard to evaluate though, um, given that he was on Buffalo, and you know they just never used their running backs like very much at all. Like like he only has 
basically a hundred carries uh, per season in his first three years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had Devin Singletary in front of him, which isn't saying a whole lot, but they definitely had like a, like he was kind of the bruiser and Singletary was a little bit more of the pass catcher, not exclusively that, or even like, you know, they just didn't really use these guys um, that much at Buffalo. So it's kind of hard to say like, oh, he's not going to do this or he's not capable of this. Like he's obviously capable of handling a workload and, uh, and being pretty good with it. Um, I'm just not sure what Cincinnati's plan is for him. Like, obviously, they went out and paid him. Um, they do have Chase Brown, who we saw some flashes from uh, last season, but nothing, I wouldn't say, like, crazy impressive to where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's going to be this guy or this guy. I think it is going to be pretty close to a 50-50 committee. Um, I know they used, uh, the, the Bengals used Joe Mixon a lot on like in the passing game. And so I think that is going to continue forward with mm -hmm. Moss and Brown. Um, it's not necessarily Moss's strong suit in the past. Um, we did see um, some involvement last last year in Indy. So it's kind of a tough one. I think if it's just a late second, like I think he's a, a decent enough buy, but I'm just going to say hold. I feel like, if he's on your team, you're probably keeping him um, uh, as a dev piece. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's necessarily worth going out to buy unless it, that's about all you can get or some of these kind of like low end RB2 guys. Um, yeah. To try and shore up your depth uh, or your uh, running back room. Yeah, you're probably right with the hold um, on both sides. Like, I. It's uh, you're right. We just don't know what the Bengals are going to do. Again, the news came out a week or two ago that, uh, that Chase Brown was running with the ones and all of that, and um, and that you know is the reason why Zach Moss is falling a bit. A, a, a kind of a sneaky thing that um, you know we're not maybe we don't think about is um, apparently Zach Moss is really good at pass blocking. Like they, it came out in like the Hard Knock Show with the Giants, and they were talking about him and talked about his pass blocking. And um, if that's the case, he's going to be on the field in that situation more than Chase Brown. So does, does that mean Chase Brown's like the run, the rundowns, the first, second down guy, and then Zach Moss is the third down guy. But that's just goes against the history of like the Bengals kind of a little bit. Like it's always been Joe Mixon to a certain extent. Like they do use a third down back. Um, Joe Mixon didn't play a lot on third down. Um, it just... Like the the reason why I'm I'm intrigued by Zach Moss is because like Joe Mixon was never the most uh, efficient guy. This amazing like oh he's rushing for almost five yards a carry, four point one in 2021 yards per attempt, three point nine in 2022, four point oh in in um in 2023. And I think I went back and looked over the last three years, which Joe Mixon's been a top twelve running back in points per game the last three years. He has like five games of 100 yards rushing or more in the last three years, which you would expect a lot more from, you know, the lead running back for the Bengals, who's been a top 12 running back. Um, so that's what intrigues me. Like whoever, if someone does get the workload, I think there's just going to be like Joe Mixon, you know, if they stay healthy, they're going to get a bunch of carries. They're going to have the potential to just get double digit touchdowns. They catch passes because, um, you know, Joe Mixon had, you know, 42, 60 and 52 passes um, receptions over the last three years and he never played on third down it was always first and second down like Joe Burrow will happily throw to his running backs at first and second down so that's just what intrigues me I think a little bit about um, Zach Moss but I think it's a huge risk to send even a second round pick for him right now for sure yeah so if you could only buy one of them for the exact same price would you rather have Moss or Chase Brown yeah uh, I, think, I think I just, if I had to buy one, I think I would lead Moss. Okay. I yeah. I think yeah. I'd lead more Brown just for youth and kind of like, oh, let's see what's going to go on here. Like, I don't think he was a very high draft pick, right? Wasn't he like a fifth nice round fifth, guy? Fifth round, yeah. Yeah. So it's not like they have a ton invested in him. Um, obviously yeah they went out and got zach moss because they didn't think chase brown was going to be the dude like they could have just drafted another guy behind chase brown 
like I said, I think I think it's going to be pretty. I wouldn't be surprised if they had basically basically the exact same stat line uh, at the end mm -hmm. of the year, Chase Brown and and Moss. So I think I would yeah. just lean Chase Brown for the like what's in the what's behind door number two kind of a thing. So if I had to buy one, I think I'd, I'd lean Brown, but. There's not a whole lot we can say about why we would pick one or the other. It's kind of just you gotta you gotta feel it in your balls. Yeah, and again, it might be just smart to not even go after either one of these guys, you know, like and it, with a second round pick. So um, yeah, I don't know if you can get a whole lot better than these kinds of players with a second round pick, though. You know, I'd much rather if I had an early second round pick, I'd much rather have Josh Jacobs or, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'd even go so far as to say if I had two seconds, instead of buying these two guys, I'd rather just buy Josh Jacobs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess that kind of goes without saying, but yeah. Another slight concern is like, like Chase Brown last year. Um, he didn't play at all really in the first uh, 11 weeks of the season. He literally had two carries in the first 11 weeks and he was like a uh, did not play a DMP in, in four straight weeks and um, and then he started to get a little bit of run so like guys like Travion Williams and Chris Edvin, Ed, Evans were ahead of them and maybe they just did something different they knew they had Mixon to he was their guy and those other guys did more on special teams or whatever and, well, and maybe Trayvon, that's why so Travion Williams is the shit dude that's why <laughs> apparently yeah uh -huh. apparently but um, yeah, I think holds smart there. So um, I think that's it for these guys. Um, like and subscribe, help us get to 500. We are eight subscribers away at the time of recording. So we're almost there. Uh, we'll be back looking at a couple of wide receivers in the next video. Catch you guys all in that video.